Good morning. Uh, sorry about last week. Um, there was some. Um, honestly, my flip was telling me it was a corroded file and it wouldn't put it on my computer, uh, and so I apologize for that. So I'm just going to shoot it again because some of the information has changed, and uh, I will answer the same questions as I asked answered last week. Um, I'll start with this. Went to the doctor yesterday, and um, they they just did kind of normal test on me, and and everything looked good. I had some blood levels blood level issue in regard to Lauren. What was the Neutrophils. The neutro uh, neutrophils were low, which which wasn't a big deal, but um, but it'll delay chemo for um, a, a couple of days, uh, and so I've got to do some labs again, and then uh, we'll see how we go from there. But um, um, my next MRI is July twenty first. Uh, we'll do that MRI in the morning, and then I won't meet with Fink until the next day. Um, and so MRI on July twenty first. It's with perfusion again. Um, so like I said, during this first year. Uh, this type of cancer can be just, it, it can shut down for a decade or it can get very, very aggressive. If it gets very, very aggressive, uh, more than likely that's going to be this year. Uh, so MRI every couple of months. And so that MRI is on July 21st. I'll find out the reading of that uh, MRI on the morning of the 22nd. And so as usual, we will post um, what we found out that night. And so uh, all the MRIs from here on out will be uh, pretty important. Now, let, let me let me get to um, the the really probably the question that popped up more than any of the other questions were um, they, they came in, 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 in different kind of arrangements of the same questions but it kind of revolved around how I choose what I speak at um, and, and what I thought of guys speaking at certain events and not other events. Um, uh, some questions about my statement at T4G, some uh, questions about what I thought about Rick Warren going to the uh, Desiring God National Conference um, uh, this year, um, uh, questions about me going to certain conferences. I won't name those certain conferences, but um, so so let me let me just tell you how our our system works, and then what my input has been into that system of me speaking. Um, there is um, historically been just me and a guy named Chris Chavez who kind of look over those things and, and and say, yeah, let's do this, or yeah, let's not do this. Um, but recently, because of my health and because of other things, we're building a team that's me, uh, my wife Lauren, um, Chris Chavez, um, and then an elder at the Village Church. Um, and, and what we've done is we've said you can be out kind of this much. And, and then from there, um, I, here, here's what I'm looking at. I, I always want to play with my own family. And, and by that, I mean, if I get opportunities within the Reformed community, then, then I want to speak into the Reformed community. Um, but, but what ends up happening, if you simply just stay within people who um, th already think like you and are already striving to do the things that you're striving to do, um, then, man, you're preaching to the choir. And it seems to me, now I, I could be wrong, and I'm fully expecting to hear that I am, it seems to me that you would spend your life preaching to the choir. And so I'm not, I think when all said and done, I don't, I don't know that I'm interested in spending uh, the days of my life that way. Whereas in other settings, um, if, if, a, if a conference that's primarily egalitarian or primarily Arminian or primarily um, um, uh, not not biblical in its preaching, but but still wants to allow me to come in for 40, 45 minutes and preach the Bible, uh, man, man, I'm going to do that. I'm going to take advantage of that um, for two reasons. One, because if it's, you know, um, six, seven, eight, ten, twelve thousand people, and that gives me the opportunity to push them to 1 Timothy 4 or Hebrews 11 or and begin to unpack those things and begin to challenge those guys uh, to be faithful to the scriptures, then wouldn't I be a fool not to take that? I just feel like I would. Um, and, and, and couldn't go against my own conscience going, oh, that guy's speaking there, oh, that guy's this, so I can't show up at that. because that, I, I don't think that they should get to dictate to, to, to me. Um, and, and by they, I mean um, guys with poor theology shouldn't get to dictate to me that, that I can't preach faithfully to thousands and thousands and thousands of, of pastors and, and preachers. And so um, I start to often look outside of... Um, uh, outside of the reform. So if I'm not going to do resurgence, if I'm not going to do desiring God, if I'm not going to do those things, um, or, or I've already got them on the calendar, then I start looking for where are um, some 
um, some opportunities that are outside of uh, our way of thinking that are asking me to speak into uh, in the end their way of thinking and and so th that's why I go outside the bounds do take a lot of heat uh, particularly from the TRs particularly from the truly reformed um, who, who consider me a sellout but um, but you know I'll listen I'll stand in front of God and be judged um, I, I have a hard time believing that he's going to go Chad, I'm just so disappointed in you. You faithfully preached the scriptures um, where people were there who, who weren't. Um, and, and so that, that's the first reason. Um, the second reason is, is because of the offline conversations that I get to have. So I can't tell you how often other pastors have pulled me aside and going, so, so tell me how you landed at this, tell me how you landed at this, or you really believe this? And it gives me an opportunity uh, to go back and explain from the scriptures. And, and some of that's led to real fruitful things. Some of that has led to real frustrating things. I was called the Bible guy once. Um, to this day, um, there's frustration in my heart that, that surfaces over a, a guy who's pastoring a fairly large church calling me the Bible guy. I mean, I was just going, should we all be the Bible guy? I mean, I'm not sure what you're talking about if it's not rooted in that. I, I, don't, I don't know how you, I guess you have to form a, a, a team to help you cleverly work through what you're going to say if you if you don't know the scriptures. Now, here here's the other thing, because I don't want, I don't want you to hear that as a shot, because some guys put together creative teams, and I think that's a really, uh, that's a really um, a cool way of doing it. If someone on that team is the theologian. Um, you got to make sure that your creative team isn't heretical. You, you have to make sure that your creative team has somebody on there that goes, that, that, that'd be a really cool way of teaching this, except that it's biblically wrong. Um, and, and in which case, you, you're in trouble. So I've, had to, got, I've got to have those conversations uh, offline with guys, and I'm hoping that the kingdom's a better place for it. Um, I, as far as Rick Warren speaking at the Desiring God conference, a couple of things. It, it's no business of mine. Uh, my name is Matt Chandler. I'm the lead pastor of the Village Church. Uh, I do not stand in front of uh, God and give an account for Desiring God for their national conference or uh, for Rick Warren. That means that, man, I just don't simply know a lot about Rick Warren outside of he has an unbelievable amount of influence. Uh, the, the only book I've read of his uh, was The Purpose Driven Church in College. Um, and, and so I, I just don't know a lot about uh, Rick Warren. Um, I, I do know this. Um, John Piper is a man who loves and fears God and knows his Bible really well. Um, and, and so I, I'm going to trust the discernment of John and I'm going to trust the discernment of him knowing what he's doing in regards to managing his influence and, and letting others hear from and, and see Rick Warren. And so, man, that's, that's all I'd have to say uh, about that. I, I am not, in the end, it's a frustrating day to be alive in regards to just the proclamation of the scriptures and the, the teaching of God's word. And that's not because um, we're overly persecuted by our government or there are people trying to kill us. Well, I mean, I think some guys... I think some people have tried to kill Driscoll before, but um, n nobody's really tried to kill me or kill uh, anybody I know because we're believers in Christ, okay? But what has ended up happening is you're judged in five-minute sound bites. And, and so, uh, you know, I'll preach an hour-long sermon, and, and somebody will pull five minutes out of it and then judge me completely on that five minutes removed from the whole. Um, and that's a part of technology. And, 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 and then you never get anything back, man. It's probably a weekly thing that I, I get an email from somebody who recently has been turned on to my teaching who listened to something I said in 2004, not even at the village, but at um, um, some retreat or, or, or some conference or something. They're going, you, you really, how could you say this? You really land here? And so I have to email back, well, I said that years and years and years ago. And uh, when, I was, when I was honestly in my early 20s and, and I don't know that I land there, don't know that I believe that, don't know that um, I, I, I land there at all anymore, I more land here. And uh, it's like there's no room for any type of theological growth and there's no grace given to anybody. So instead of emailing and go, hey, could you answer this? Hey, could you, um, could you provide some clarity here? And instead, guys hop on blogs or they, they, they take out a public campaign against you because you're a public person. So public persons should be judged publicly. All right, that's, that's the nonsense, that's the drivel I, I read. Um, when they're, the irony is they're yanking that text completely out of its context um, to, to make it say what they want to say so that they can appear to be 
um, knowledgeable. Uh, and so I, I, I said in, in the end in Proverbs, um, I, I tweeted earlier this week out of Proverbs 18 to, it, it's just a great verse uh, to read and meditate and think on. So um, that, that, that's this week and, and so we'll uh, post the blog next week. Um, thank you.